This is Biology 301D. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do today is introduce you to the class. There's virtually nothing you need right down. Um, and by the way, the forms you have, we don't really want your names on them. Um, so if you did it, it's fine. So we'll start with who. My name is Jim Bull. We have Patricia Salerno here, Mariana Vasconcelos there, and Matt Paff. The four of us are in charge of administering the class. Uh, <clears throat> and so you'll see probably the most of me. Um, in terms of what the course is about, so I'm going to focus on what the course is about and then how we go about doing things almost entirely today. Uh, this is pretty much a course in what we might call rational decision making, evidence based decision making, critical thinking, call it what you want. It is a biology class. Um, <clears throat> but um, as I'll explain, it's, uh, the emphasis isn't that heavy on biology. So my goal is to teach you a way of thinking, right? In, in a nutshell, that's what this is about. Society has gotten really complicated. Um, there are all kinds of decisions you face now. It's going to get even more complicated. There are decisions that affect your health, that affect all kinds of things. You as voters are going to have to decide, you know, whether one politician is talking more out his or her butt than another politician, at least when it comes to science. And <clears throat> so the goal here is to equip you with a way of thinking that you can use throughout your life and a sort of a way of how do I figure out what I can trust in the society. And things have gotten, the web has made some things easier, it's made some things worse, right? So now there's this deluge of information out there, right? And you can look up anything you want, but, but there's also misinformation and there's disinformation. <clears throat> and I think increasingly we're gonna need to be able to sort that out for ourselves. There, and then there's these virtual reality shows on TV where you know, they make shit up about all kinds of things like ghosts and whatnot, and you look at it and it seems entirely plausible. And so the distinction between opinion and fact is being blurred. And <clears throat> there are ways to deal with this, but <clears throat> unless we're trained to do this as a populace, we aren't gonna do a very good job. And frankly, science education in this country doesn't really equip us to do this, right? You can take all the courses in physics and chemistry and biology you want, and still not really get a good idea of how to go out in the real world and figure out, ooh, is there some foundation to this? So that's what this class is about. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there are lots of motivations we can use. This, uh, by the way, is our website, which I'll get to in a minute, but um, this is just one example here that I pulled out that seems kind of dramatic because it's so extreme. This was an article out of Newsweek, I think it was, back, I don't know, a decade ago or so. The woman on the right, Christine Maggiore, um, was what's called an AIDS denialist. So she had been diagnosed in the 90s with HIV, being infected with the virus that causes AIDS. And there was a small cadre of scientists, I think one of them still out there advocating this, that's saying, HIV doesn't cause AIDS, you don't have anything to worry about. For whatever reason, she chose to believe that view. That's why she was in Newsweek, right? The HIV disbeliever. <clears throat> um, and you can see her holding a kid, that's her husband on the left, and so on. And the statistics here are, um, <clears throat> she refused drugs, right? That's part of being a denialist. It's like, no point in taking drugs, because even though I've got HIV, I'm not gonna get AIDS. Um, <clears throat> she had kids two kids, one in 97 and 2002. She refused treatment for them. The son born in 97 was actually HIV free. Uh, I'm not sure about the daughter, but the woman here died in 2008. Her daughter died at age three. Um, and she made sure that, you know, the media couldn't find out exactly what was going on, but all the inferences that she and her daughter died of AIDS. So, However you might feel about our individual rights, you know, that she had the right to refuse to take drugs or believe whatever she want, it gets a little kind of dicey to say, well, did she have the right to make this decision for her child who didn't live to see age four? Anyway, this is obviously a profound uh, 
we might call, call it a fatally stupid decision on her part, right, that many of us wouldn't have made, but the question is what was her basis for making that decision? And then if we look at our own lives, we can say, gee, am I making an equally stupid decision about something else? Or as a society, are we making you know, equally stupid decisions when it comes to things like climate change about which there's a lot of uncertainty and so on? So, <clears throat> you know, and the problems out there that we're facing as a society are, are immense. Um, and you know maybe things will cruise along okay, maybe they won't, but we it seems like every five years there's new information on diet and health. You guys probably aren't worried about that yet because um, you're too young. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, and you aren't old enough to realize that what we're told changes about every five years. You know, so I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, salt was bad, eggs were bad, all kinds of things were bad, saturated fats were bad. <clears throat> And then you look at the evidence and it's like, well, actually, none of that was really true. Salt's bad for some people, so salt's okay now, eggs are okay now. Uh, and there's research showing that, in fact, people with, you know, eating meats with saturated fats do better in some of these heart studies than the people that are on low-fat diets and so on. What is, you know, why is diet research so difficult? As one example, we've got an obesity epidemic out there, you know, according to the statistics anyway, that thing could just destroy health care in this country because as people, you know, go up and develop health problems, there's going to be just this immense burden on the system. What's the basis of it and what can we do about it? Um, you know, and on a smaller one, maybe you've heard about something called BPA, bisphenol A, it's used in making plastics. Drink a soda out of a plastic bottle, you're getting it. You eat things out of canned foods, which, you know, in my day, there wasn't any lining in the canned foods. Well, canned foods have high levels of it. And then when you get a receipt from a cash register, you know, you sign credit card or whatever, that paper is covered with BPA. Should we worry about that? And so on. So <clears throat> these, there's just this whole suite of problems which we can apply this type of thinking to and we can understand science can't solve some problems, it can solve others, what's the nature of the evidence and how much can we trust. That's what I want to present here <clears throat> and I want to sort of offer a warning um, or a caveat and that is <clears throat> There's virtually no biology in this class. Now, some of you starting to panic think, oh my god, I need a biology credit here. The administrators have not figured this out, so this does count <laughs> for biology credit. <clears throat> in addition, there's very little memorization. This is a course where I'm trying to get you to think, and the exams, which are up on, the old ones are up online, you look at the questions, most of the questions present you with a description of something and you've got to figure out in a new context what applies. So the standard biology class is, you know, here's some set of reactions, here's a biochemistry of a cell, here's the stages of meiosis, etc. It's memorization, 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 not here. And so some of you may want biology, some of you may be quite comfortable with memorization if that's what you want. There are other courses, I don't know if you can get into them anymore, but, um, but anyway, um, I'm not making any apologies for this, but if this is not what you want, then try and look for a course that is. <clears throat> uh, so now the how of the course. The one thing, well, frankly, you don't need to remember anything. Um, from today, but the one thing that might be useful is are these two. This is the website for the class, and uh, it's so see if you can remember it without writing it down. Bio301D.com. <clears throat> so that's your Bio301D is the number of this course, and that's all you got to remember. Just type that in the um, upper part of your browser and it'll go there automatically. The email address is bio301d at utexas.edu. It took me months to get that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in the syllabus there are of course materials that I talk about but I'll just mention one thing right now. 
we use Blackboard for a few things, not many, but a few things. And there are two sections of this class. So I'm going to combine them into a single Blackboard course, which means when you log into Blackboard, you're going to see the unique number for this section. You'll also see a different unique number for a virtual class. I don't know what it'll be called yet. Um, but that's the one I'm going to use because two sections back to back. There's you guys and there's the hour before you in this room. And I make no distinction between the two, with one exception I'll mention later. So, <clears throat> and what that means is you can attend either lecture, you can attend neither lecture, you can attend both. <clears throat> so let me talk about course materials here. This, so the syllabus is online on our web page. Um, <clears throat> so there are the two sections, unique numbers, which we can all happily forget because they don't mean anything late. So class website, bio31d.com, class email, you text us. By the way, the book is on the website. It's a, an electronic book. You don't need to pay for it. Um, so it's just up there. Uh, sadly, there is one thing you'll need to pay for, and that's the use of Quest. We're going to have something like 11 different online quizzes on it, and it's going to be $25. And I apologize, it's the first year in probably two decades that there's been any cost associated with this class. And my goal is to get rid of that, too. But <clears throat> uh, in addition, there'll be something we use in class in the future where <clears throat> you can use your cell phones, <clears throat> a computer, a uh, Twitter thingy, whatever that is. Um, and you can respond to questions I put up. Now, there's no part of your grade that's associated with this. I will give you a motivation, I guess, next time as to why you might want to do it. But uh, it's the, the link is poll everywhere. And what I want you to do is actually go into that system and simply register as a voter. All you're going to do is click on a link, that link there, and you're going to type in either a name or an EID. Some way I can recognize who you are. And, uh, and I guess they ask for an email address, too, or something like that. But anyway, that when you're registered in there, you don't have to do the registration. But if you do the registration, then I can sort of, when, if you come to me saying, OK, I need help in the class, we can go in and look at what you've been doing in class through that site. And I can help you better that way. OK, <clears throat> jumping a little bit ahead, attendance is not a factor in your grade. Furthermore, if you want, there will be videos of all the lectures. And it's at that site. It's called Media Site, and uh, UT is doing a lot of this. But what that means is, is if you miss a lecture, even if you wanted to come, you miss a lecture, you can go to that site, you can go to the lecture, and then you can see what's, what happened that day. Now, the, there will also be a different form of video available for the lecture, which will be on Quest. The downside media site, uh, or the lecture captures it's called, will show whatever's on the screen, and there'll be a little window of me. But the window goes to about here. And as you might have figured out, I tend not to stay in that window very much. And if I write things on the board, you don't see that. So um, <clears throat> anyway, there'll be a number of options for you to watch lectures online. And by the way, these will not be live. So if you think, oh, I don't want to get up today, but I'll just click on the screen and watch them give the lecture, that won't happen. They get uploaded, I don't know, hours after the lecture, something like that. So more incentive for you to not come to lecture, but I don't want to suggest that I'm encouraging that. Uh, and then the last is, is Blackboard that I mentioned already. And <clears throat> so, so basically, I look at this, and I would kind of remember that, and I would doze off. There's not much else that I'm covering today that's really critical. I will go over some other material in the syllabus. <clears throat> uh, and I guess we'll start with grading. So how is the course graded? There will be four exams, five homeworks, 11 Quest Online quizzes, we're going to count the best three of the exams, the best four of the homeworks, the best eight of these quizzes. Uh, these are worth roughly 100, 40, 
12 points. <clears throat> we're going to sum the points, and then we're going to, your grade will be determined by how many points you get relative to a threshold. Thresholds are 90% of the total points for an A, 80 for a B, and so on. <clears throat> um, so you'll be dropping one exam, you'll be dropping one homework, and several of these things. All you're after is points, right? That's it. It doesn't matter when you're sitting in the front row every day smiling at me, whether you say, God, I wish you were my daddy, or, <laughs> or you know, you're an asshole if you greet me that way every day. None of that matters. Um, it's all the points. <clears throat> and so, you know, some people at the end of the semester, oh, I worked really hard for this class. Doesn't matter, it's the points. So just, that's the way it is. Uh, <clears throat> now, there is one thing we have to decide, or since I didn't put it in the syllabus, and that is the grading scheme in the sense of plus minus. So as, a, as of two or three years ago, the university said, oh, we can now use plus minus grading. And I thought this was a great idea, and I was in a minority of one in the class. So <clears throat> I'm going to let you choose among three options for plus minus system. So no plus minus, <clears throat> plus minus, or plus only. <clears throat> and you know, the university says you are now customers, you should be making choices, etc. And my attitude is to the administration, so you get to choose this, right? <clears throat> So how much, how many of you want the no plus minus option among these three? How many want plus minus? How many want plus only? <laughs> uh, it's, it's close, let me, uh... <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> that's what it's going to be. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I suppose I'll put that in the syllabus at some point. <clears throat> uh, so, I, <clears throat> so anyway, the book's online, the, the lectures are online, etc. And in a subsequent lecture, I'll tell you about help sessions, but uh, actually, let me take a poll now. So there are going to be help sessions that are optional, obviously, because you haven't registered for them. And they're going to meet in the weeks, a week or so before an exam comes up. Oh, yeah, i got to do the calendar here. Uh, <clears throat> so what's your preference for this, right? There's not going to be a way to satisfy everyone here. But morning, afternoon, or say in the order of evening, 5 p.m. So just a show of hands to get an idea. We'll have several of them available, and I just want to know what distribution to shoot for. How many would want them, they th you think, in the morning? And we're not talking 8 o'clock here, OK? We're <clears throat> morning goes till 1 or 2. Um, <laughs> afternoon, how about evening? Oh, OK, quite a bit. So I never thought of that before. So we'll have some, ev some sessions like that. <clears throat> So these would be, in the week before an exam and homework due, we just have these sessions and you can go and say that some of the sessions will be for homework, and so you can bring whatever you're working on with homework and then get help on them. Or with exams, they can go over material that you want. It's a what? Yeah, something like that. But with homework, it's not review, it'd be, so we'd have a couple days that are dedicated to homework and then a couple days that are dedicated to the exam. Now, the calendar. <clears throat> so exam dates are written in stone. So this is a calendar of important days, et cetera. Um, you'll see in blue the obligatory religious holidays for the semester. <laughs> in red, the red dates are days in which your presence in class will mean points for you. So there's four exam dates. They're all on Wednesdays, which means you got plenty of time to recover from weekend festivities, and you aren't really getting ready for the next weekend on a Wednesday yet. <clears throat> um, and then there's one, one thing that's a little bit different. 
with homework. So four homeworks are going to be out of class. You, they're, they're actually on the web already. The assignments are clear. You find an article, you fill in a template, et cetera, and you upload it to Blackboard. We're trying something different with one of them this year where you're going to come to class on a day and we'll have like a 15-minute thing where you fill something out and we'll call it uh, a homework type thing. So I think there are five dates during the semester, all Wednesdays, when being here matters for your grade for getting points. So th those are here. <clears throat> so I think the last point I want to cover before we go to um, filling out your bubble sheet concerns people who are not registered but want to get in. So I want a show of hands of people who are not registered and think they want to register. And I, so, okay, so great, we're under six. Um, I want to see you after class, I want to get your name. The waiting list has 45 people on it for this and the previous section, so I can't let everyone in. But if you're here, I get your name there, and you also have to be on the waiting list. Then a week from Friday I can let you in, and I will but I need your name here now because, you know, if you have the initiative to show up for the first day of class, then I can tell the other people that come in whining, you know, in two days that it's tough noogie, um, and I can feel righteous about doing it, and that's the important thing. <clears throat> okay, the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to read a bunch of statements to you, and, um, and I'll also show the statements. And what I want is your response to them, and it's going to be a graded response. You're going to fill in one bubble. This is not a test. It's not an aptitude thing. I don't want your names on the form. Um, but we're going to use the distributions of your responses next time. <clears throat> so I'm going to read a statement, and you're going to respond as to how true you think it is. And so A would mean definitely true, and this is graded, right? Probably true. <clears throat> Maybe true. D is no opinion. And then we're going back the other direction. Well, maybe it could be false. Probably false. Or, no way in hell that it's true, so. <clears throat> so the first statement is, smoking increases lung cancer rates. And just, you know, I don't want you to sit there biting your nails trying to figure out, oh, is that true or not? I just want a gut response. <clears throat> Okay, vaccinations reduce a person's risk of getting a disease. This is number two. Just fill in one letter. <clears throat> Three, drunk driving increases car accident rates. And none of this needs to, you don't need to feel this has to be based on any kind of personal experience. <clears throat> Cell phone, four is cell phone use while driving increases car accident rates. Five, preventable medical errors are one of the top ten causes of death in the U.S. And by the way, these topics are not a reflection of where we're going this semester. Just want to motivate us thinking about how we make decisions. Six, DNA typing of a suspect in a serious crime, rape, or murder is at least 99% reliable. Seven, eyewitness identification of a suspect in a serious crime is at least 99% reliable. Eight, the Earth is largely spherical, not flat. <clears throat> I know, trick questions. 
the Earth orbits the Sun. And in case the language is confusing here, we have the Sun here, <coughs> and the Earth is out there. <coughs> 10, the Earth is several billion years old. Eleven, seasons are due to the Earth being at different distances from the Sun during its elliptical or orbit. So out here would be summer uh, because the orbit isn't exactly circular. So when you're further away, you'd have one season then went close to different season. Twelve, man and other mammals of today, e.g. apes, evolved from a common ancestor. Thirteen, humans have landed on the moon. Fourteen, extraterrestrial aliens have landed on Earth. You don't get to count people of the opposite political party from you as extraterrestrial aliens. Fifteen, governments have concealed evidence that extraterrestrial aliens have landed on Earth. So, it is 16, it is possible for some people to communicate with the dead. 17, astrology predictions provide insight to your future. 18, astrology predictions cannot be tested scientifically. 19, technology will provide alternatives to oil in time to avoid catastrophic energy shortages in the U.S. 20, the Bigfoot Sasquatch genome has been sequenced. 21, human activities are causing climate change. By the way, we're headed for 28 of these, so there is an end in sight. 22, humans will go, eventually go extinct. 23 refers to a meltdown that occurred in Japan, I don't know, four or five years ago. Um, <clears throat> which you might not have been old enough to realize at the time. The radiation released from damaged Japanese reactors justified taking protective measures in the U.S., and I mean personal protective measures, going out and buying iodine and, <clears throat> and eating it. <clears throat> not elemental iodine, but... <clears throat> 24, when making important decisions, humans are intrinsically rational. 25, mathematics and computing are replacing the need to look at evidence and science. 25. Couple questions that are kind of numeric. So you randomly draw one ball out of a pot <coughs> without looking. You have a greater chance of choosing a black ball in a pot with nine black balls and 91 white balls than in a pot with only one black ball and nine white balls. So you got 100 balls in one pot, 10 in the other, and then with 100 balls, it's 9 black, 91 white, and the other one, it's 1 black and 9 white. <clears throat> 27. A baseball and bat together cost $1.10. If the bat costs a dollar more than the ball, the ball costs 10 cents. 
Last, scientists have found a cure for cancer but have suppressed its use.